I'm quite embarrassed because this is about the um, third time I've tried to to do this scene, to import this, because I crashed Blunder once and then I went off on a wild tangent. I'm not going to do any of that this time. So I just split the window. You just saw what I did there. I grabbed this whole thing in the corner and I dragged that aside. And this isn't supposed to be a big Blender tutorial. It's more of like a process uh, orientation for you to use in other 3D apps or even in Blender, but you've got to have some familiarity with Blender to do this. So I'm going to go to the, uh, to the text editor and I'm going to open uh, from the desktop that, that Python script that we exported and then I'm going to go text run script and voila so now we have our our scene imported into blender so that's that's cool that's neat um so let's move let's get rid of that little window we'll zoom in here let's uh, shift this around a bit um another thing i might want to do is i might want to only display this as uh wire uh, that look, that look, that's looking pretty good I just want to make sure that we're um, I think we're actually off by a frame because uh, the image sequence is going to be set to um, to start on frame one Oh, no, it's not. It starts on frame zero. Oh, so that's good. Maybe it's just a screen redraw problem then. A uh, couple things I'm going to do here. I'm going to turn off the display relationship lines. Get rid of those lines. And, in fact, the, the whole synthized world, the um, these, these trackers... I'm going to shut them off now. I don't believe if I hit the bounding, if I hit B for bounding box, I can select all those, but I don't think I can turn them all off and on at once. <sighs> oh, Blender. You know, there's probably a Blender guy out there going, yeah, you know, if you just press the, you know, whatever button, it'll do that for you. But whatever, I, I don't need these active right now. I've got my object in there. So we're good. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to start mushing the geometry around to get it to be a more tight fit. And for that, I need to take I need to select the object and go into um, edit mode, and then I can select a vertex at a time and go into the connected proportional editing and if I hit G I can mush this stuff around and if I use the middle mouse button I can I can mush like much bigger areas so because we aligned it already in synthize pretty well I'm gonna just start mushing it around A little G key action and we do this all always from the camera point of view so when we get to views like this, we can zoom in here and we can select this and we can bring this whole thing down. Uh, actually, let's select a vertex on the nose and grab and shrink this down. We'll get the nose to come up. Grab this, come down. So I worked on a, on a movie a long time ago called Racing Stripes. And uh, it was a kid's talking animal movie. And we did this as our first step for all of our tracking to get the geometry to more closely fit the photography. Uh, we called this the mush phase. So here, let me shrink the proportional editing sphere down. This eye looks like it's pretty good, but I'm going to move it over. 
always want to do this from screen space. You don't want to do this from some other coordinate system, or you don't want to go outside of what the camera sees to pull this off. To do a proper mush, you got to do it from this point of view. And then I'm going to shrink that down, bring that in. So that's pretty good. This just allows me to get my geometry to more closely match. And then I'm going to re-export this, this geometry, to Synthize. And, uh, and then I can use Synthize. Because Synthize, some of the new tools in Synthize kind of demand that your geometry closely matches your uh, your your scene basically so hey look at that now we have a much much tighter fit yeah look at that even that little flap of hoo-ha over here um, view I think I can turn off the grid uh, where is that? Oh, here we go. Grid floor. Ugh. And the horizon line. I think I can turn that off too. But um, hey, like I said, I'm not as good at Blender. Getting there, little by little. Let's make sure the corners of my mouth here. Let's yeah. We can probably get a tighter fit on on this stuff. There we go. The filtrum of my nose will bring that up barely, slightly, barely. There. I changed my mind. We're gonna bring that whole thing down and bring that back down. Um, yeah, I mean, I could, you, you can go down a rabbit hole on this stuff. And, uh, All we're looking for here is a tighter fit to the profile. Oh, you know what? I have to be able to select through my object. There we go. There we go. Pretty good. Pretty good. You just want the profile to match. Anyway, like I said, you can go down a rabbit hole here. You can just keep kind of noodling and tweaking this forever. But already you see that what I've done looks so much closer in terms of the of, of the geometry match than than what I had. There we go. Oh yeah, that's so good. Uh, and then we can re-export um, this piece of geometry. Now, what would have been nice is that the OBJ exporter from Synthize would have maintained uh, our triangulation. And we can deal with that in Blender, but it's, it's a time-consuming process because we have to go in here and we have to, oops, that's not what we wanted. We have to hide these individual um, triangulations. I'm not even, I don't think I'm going to even bother doing that. I will say this in closing, uh, and I'm sorry if you've already left me, but the one thing I will say is that um, you'll see like demos for PF Track where they just kind of stick some geometry in and go, hey, look, it's magic, and, and uh, it all just automatically tracks everything for you and automatically aligns all your geometry and yeah well I'll tell you this I've done trade show demos too and you tend to when you do trade show demos create really trade show demo floor uh, happy scenes scenes that you can say hey look at how easy this was that was not my intention here. My intention here was to actually create something that was a little difficult to do. But to also show you how to tackle the difficult stuff for when, when your software 
doesn't automatically do all the work for you, which I kind of hate those those demos because it it gives producers the idea that computers do all the work and they don't. There's an artist toiling away, much like we have here. So there you go. I'm going to re-export this. Um, let's go out of edit mode and then I'm going to say file export wavefront obj back to the desktop and I'm going to say this is going to be digital map merc version 4 and I'm going to say selection only uh, don't need to apply any modifiers I'm going to include the edges and yeah, there you go. I'm just gonna do all that, export the OBJ. You know what? Probably should have done one thing first. Rename. Map head. File, export, OBJ. Digital map mark version four and then selection only, all of those things, export OBJ. So there you go, that's that. Um, hopefully that was helpful. And then we'll pick this back up and synthize in the next video, which who knows when that's gonna get done. I've got a lot of uh, learning myself to do of the new features, but, um, but there you go. Um, and we'll, hopefully we'll talk soon. Okay, bye.